talk about? Technical difficulties. Okay, 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 okay. What's up fam? I love making videos like this where I give a little behind the scenes on how I make content and it's been really helpful for some of you and I hope this one is just as helpful. I'm going on tour with the one and only Emily King in May of 2023. I'm excited about that. Tickets are on sale now. Please check it out in the description. I'm taking my camera along with me and I wanna shoot some content. My main aim on this video is how does this equipment make content creation more fun and more efficient for someone who makes content for themselves. So let's get right to it. I'm going to start off with my Sony a7S III, which was an upgrade for me from the a7 III. a7 III is a great camera. It just has some limitations for me, but now the a7S III, the battery life is so much better. It also shoots in 4K, specifically HEVC. Face detect on the Sony a7S III is amazing. And of course, it had a little flip out screen because sometimes I would be pressing record on the camera, the battery died, or the memory card ran out of space, but the camera screen was on the back, so I did not know. And I'd be like, yo, that was the take. That was the one, I killed it. Camera stopped recording six minutes ago. What do I shoot with as far as lenses? The one that I have on here right now is the Sony 20 millimeter G lens, not the G Master. It's not a G Master, it's just a bachelor. And I use it for these talking head videos. It's great if you wanna get really close up to the camera and you can also bring the light closer to you without it being in the shot. It feels a little closer, a little more with the, it's when you have a wider lens. But sometimes that's not the look that you're going for. It's a little too wide. So you wanna get something like a 35 millimeter. I wanna say I only shoot with prime lenses. I'm not really a zoom guy. I just want to have a consistency on focal length as well as a wide aperture. The 35 is what I shoot most of my covers with, all of my covers really. And it's a nice field of view that feels natural to what we would normally see with our own eyes. Gives a nice blurred background. If you have a wide aperture on it, I shoot with the Sony Zeiss 35 millimeter 1.4. So I love the image that it presents. And then what I have on those two lenses is a black Pro Mist by Tiffin. It is a diffusion filter that softens up your image, lifts the shadows just a little bit. It just feels a little more moody. It also blooms your highlights. So this light back here has a little more bloom on it blooms the light coming in from the window, it softens skin up a little bit, gives a slightly dreamy effect. I stay on the one eighth range. One fourth is cool, but then one half and one full is just too much for me. It's too stylized. It takes over the attention of the video. So I just stick with a one eighth and it gives it a nice little bloom, little soft cinematic look. All right, next, what makes content creation as a self shooter more efficient and more fun? My external monitor. I'll say what I had at first. I had a F1 100 external monitor by Newer, which was, it was cool. It served its purpose, gives you bigger visibility. That's the first reason why I wanted to have an external monitor. Now I use the Atomos Ninja V. What I love about it is that, of course, it offers more visibility. It offers a lot more than just visibility, though, but there's two main things for me that was crucial. One, you can load LUTs into the monitor so you can get a preview of what that looks like while you're shooting rather than putting your LUT in the post and then figuring it out later. Not sure if you got your exposure done correctly. LUTs are just lookup tables. They're like glorified Instagram filters. They're great. They give a style, but sometimes when you're shooting an S-Log 2 or S-Log 3, for the record, I shoot an S-Log 3, just the highest dynamic range you can get out of your Sony. It's very flat. You're not really sure what it's going to look like with the LUT on there. Well, you can already cycle through the previews on the Ninja V external monitor. But the next big reason why I got the Atomos Ninja V, you can externally record. Now, this is not the only monitor that does that, but in general, investing in a monitor that records externally is a blessing because now I don't have to use memory cards. I hate using memory cards. They're so small, you lose them or you can break them. These days, if you're shooting in 4K, Getting a 128 gig or 256 gig memory card is not what it used to be. And they're not cheap, especially if you're shooting on an A7S III, you wanna shoot in 4K, you've gotta get a memory card that can handle that type of speed. I felt like I was just spending a lot of money on memory cards, so it just made sense to go ahead and put that money in a great external recorder. Now, I can put an SSD hard drive on the back of my recorder, of my back of my monitor, and I can record directly to the monitor. I can put a terabyte, two terabytes, four terabytes, eight terabytes of memory connected directly to my camera. So I don't have to keep cycling out 
memory cards. Let's just have one SSD drive. And here's the thing, I'm shooting in 4K HEVC. I can record up to 51 hours of video before I have to format it or get another one. That is huge. I take it out the back of the camera and plug it right into my laptop and just start editing right off the same hard drive that I shot it on. Workflow, mind blown. All right, the next thing I have is the Sony Commander Remote. This thing is amazing. Some of you may say, why are you using a remote? There's apps for that, that's free, don't buy a remote. If you use apps like me, then you know them things don't work like they're supposed to work. You gotta connect to it two or three times, and then it'll disconnect. If you're recording and you take a little break, you come back, it's disconnected, you gotta connect again. It's annoying. I wanted to have a remote that was dedicated to my camera. There is a remote out there that's not the Commander. It's cheaper than the Commander. The Commander's $80, but totally worth it. The cheaper one, you do have to be in direct line of sight of the camera on this little the receiver on the left side of the Sony camera. If you're on the right side of the lens and you're shooting across the lens, then it's gonna block the signal. The Commander is Bluetooth, so as long as you're within Bluetooth range, you can use this thing, and it also has a little red dot on it letting you know that this thing is recording. I had to check, just, it is recording. I love that. I do have my external monitor, and I do have my flip-out screen, but then I just have a third source telling me you are indeed recording. A couple of more things I have on my list. I got a small rig cage for my camera, and it's probably like 40 bucks on Amazon, but the cool thing about that is that you can start attaching things to it like a V-mount battery. So I bought a battery from small rig, it is amazing to be able to plug up your monitor and your camera to, especially the A7S III that you can plug up through via USB-C. So now you have even longer battery life and it just offers more flexibility. Unfortunately, it's not the cheapest thing, but it is worth it to me. Next, I would say quick release plates. Gotta have quick release plates. If you're someone who is using a tripod and then you jump over to a selfie stick or you jump over to a gimbal or you just want to take your camera off easily and not have to screw it off the tripod every single time, get quick release plates. You just put this little plate on the bottom of the camera. This is the clamp that goes on the tripod. Why can't I open this up? It's got a lock on it. Okay, cool. And boom, put this on the bottom of the camera. Now, when you have several devices, tripods, whatever you want to put your camera on, you just buy several of these. You can buy them separately and just put it on a bunch of different devices. Now, you just take the camera off <laughs> and you just slap it on whatever tripod you want to put it on. This is the Manfrotto brand. I'm actually slowly switching over to the Arca Swiss standard. This is, I don't like the Manfrotto version because it doesn't lay flush, which offers some issues as well as it's not as common. It's only made by Manfrotto versus Arca Swiss standard is made by everyone. It's like a USB cable. Anyone can make a USB cable. So that means you have more variations of what type of quick release plate you can get and they're cheaper. So go with the Arca Swiss standard is my suggestion. Next is the Aperture 120D Mark II. Amaran is like the sister company of Aperture now and they've got a newer version of the 120D. I forget what they call it. It's brighter and it's lighter and it has more smart functionality. But this thing has been holding me up. I kept buying those cheap light kits on Amazon and it just, they kept falling apart. So do yourself a favor, just get a quality light. The last thing I'm gonna talk about, is so expensive. It's the Sackler Flowtech tripod, but this thing is so easy to use. I love it. I have not found a tripod that has this type of functionality and this durability all in one. It's so easy to just slide up, slide down, slide up, slide down, but it is $1,400, why? But I got it like three years ago and I've never thought about buying another tripod. I don't see myself buying things for the moment, if I can. Not everything I can do that with, but if I can, just buy this one time for the next five to 10 years, let's just do that. So that's why I did it. What am I missing in my kit? What should I be shooting with? What makes your content creation more fun and more efficient as a self-shooter? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it from you. Please like and subscribe and all that stuff. Don't forget to like and subscribe.